We are here this morning praising the Lord for his grace and his mercy. My prayer for us to be obedient in the time of this crisis. God is going to be with us and he is going to bring us back to this building. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless us this morning that he will keep our hearts in perfect peace. My thought this morning is God's protection. Psalms 91, 1 through 6 is my scripture text. I'd like to start out with this thought about this coronavirus outbreak. The coronavirus has taken hold in South China. Over 80,000 people have contracted it and 275,000 people have died. Because it's an animal virus, humans have no immunity to it. The U.S. stock market has fallen 8,000 points due to this outbreak. Why? The other reason is that coronavirus escaped uh, the Camden nation in China and has broken out in Italy, Iran, South Korea, the U.S., and Europe. The cases are increasing. The U.S. now has 2,695 confirmed cases. Universities and schools have closed. Business in many consumers have areas of drying up as people stay home and hold off the spending. In every country, fear of all this condemnation and contagious has grown. There are now 137,000 people and cases worldwide in South Korea. People form massive lines more than a mile long just to get a face mask. Should Christians get the same panic as non-Christians? Do we have hope? A comfort they don't have, but yes, we do have hope. Our text says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, abides under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowlers and the snares and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers under his wings and you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terrors of night, nor the arrows that flyeth by day, nor the pestilence that stalk in the darkness, nor the plagues that destroy at mid midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no one can harm you or overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in the hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent because he loves me, saith the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him for acknowledge my name. He will call on me and I will answer and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with the long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank the Lord for the scripture that we have today. This is one of the most powerful passages and comforting passages. The title of this, our message this morning is dwelling, uh, is being God's protecting 
us through all what we are going through. The dwelling in the secret place. What is the secret place of the Most High? One of David's secret hiding place when he was a fugitive, but mostly like it is the most holy place in the tabernacle, the temple. The sacred place was the Shekinah glory of God's presence. What does it mean to dwell there? The word has a spiritual meaning. For the one who dwells with God, God is the center of their affection and their thought. Like Paul says, since then you have been risen with Christ. Sit your hearts on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Sit your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you die and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. We need to be alone with God to worship him and to sing songs and give him thanksgiving even today and as we go through this crisis. Talk to God in this time. Study the word in this time. So we need to be like David, a person after God's own heart. We need to love God and pursue his relationship with him. The best we can do, it doesn't mean perfection as the deer panteth after the water brooks. So panteth my soul, thee, O God, let's desire from God's that will consume you. Confession of his faith. I will say of the Lord, the psalmist confesses by faith, God's protection and witness of his faith is to ours. In verse 1 and 2, we, we save not only by believing in our hearts, as Romans 10, 9, 9 through 10, but by confessing with our mouths. Confession is a vital part of our faith. Make sure you're not contradicting what you believe by your negative confession. Proverbs 6 and 2 says, you are snared by the words of the mouth. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, says Proverbs 18, 21. God's protection of the believer, what God's will will save from the snares of the fowlers and the deadly protesting uh, that which seizes us unwares and from which there is no way to guard t terror by night, violent robbers where chief terrorists of the night, Satan is a thief and a robber, arrows that flyeth by day, open attack from distance, speeding arrows are hard to see coming, pestilence that stalk in the darkness, the illusion of, is of the night, predators such as lions, image being an antelope in the dark, hearing and smelling of the dead approach of the giants, Hungry cats about pouncing and sinking their claws and fangs on us. Fear in the very extreme. We don't need fear at this time. We need to believe that God is going to bless us and take care of us. Put away fear, my brothers and sisters. Don't allow fear to take over you. The plagues of destruction is at noonday. New, at midday is the brightest part of the day. And it's that the coronavirus is sweeping through them. It's one that can't be stopped. This would be the finished stroke of disaster, but God will protect us from them all. No weapons formed against you will prosper. No weapons formed against you will prosper. Thank you, Jesus, for protecting us and making sure that God is going to protect us. Uh, just continue to pray that God is going to bless us. Uh, what about this comparison to others? As verse 7 says, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near to you. We here on the nation of those who love Jesus Christ are protected by him. No harm will come against you. This is an encouragement to, to not fear what others fear. We may see Christians become ill and, and 
assume that we are thus acceptable to all the diseases around here, but God will protect us. He has a promise for us. Thank you, Jesus, for what he is doing for us even right now. Hallelujah. Praise God for all what he's going to do to protect us. Paul says, my God will supply all your needs by his riches in Christ Jesus. Maybe other people will say God might not provide. Paul says, but my God shall provide. My God shall provide. He's provided for us down through the years. He's protected us over the hills. In all the sickness that we've been through, God has protected us. And we just say, thank you, Jesus. He's going to protect us through this crisis. He's going to be able to come and, uh, and be with us. Thank you, Jesus, for what he's going to do. This doesn't mean that we won't have troubles. Yes, we're going to have troubles. I will be with you even in trouble troubles. I love the statement of uh, of the three Hebrew boys. Even if it doesn't deliver us, we still will not be bowed down to the devil. Be faithful to God in all the troubles. Thank you, Lord. Help us to be faithful in these times that we are in. And, and then he says, uh, uh, how will God do it? It says in verse 11 and 16, he says, commanding his angels. We have angels that are camped around us. They protect us, and we thank God that he's protected even this building that we are in. We thank God he's protecting the community that we're in. We thank God what he's doing for each one of us in our homes today. Each member, he's protecting them from all the diseases, even our children, our grandchildren. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And then he says, uh, uh, God will place an invisible super supernatural being around you to guard you, lift you up if you fall, give you power to trample on the forces that will over wise to be deadly to you, like the lions and the snakes in the spiritual realm. We remember Elijah surrounded by the armies of the Amorinians and his servant panicked. But Elijah prayed, and his servant saw that the whole hill was surrounded by God's fiery chariots and the angels, and only the danger was to the opposing forces. God will answer your prayers in this time that we're at home. We're locked in. We're in a, we, we need to get down on our knees. We need to go to our secret place. God will answer our prayers. In uh, Psalms 91 and 15, God revealed one of the biggest difference between those who abide with him, those who don't, they will pray. God's answered their prayer. We need to pray. We cannot panic about what this coronavirus is, but when we pray to God, we'll put the invisible wall around us so that we won't be near our dwelling place. We need to pray, brothers and sisters. You receive not for you ask not, says James 4 and 2. God will keep his promise. God will keep his promise. In verse 16, God says, With a long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is one of God's promises for obedience. Let us be in obedience this time. Let us not worry at this time. Because God is going to protect us. He's going to protect us. He's going to protect even our nation. He's going to protect even our world. Thank God that we have this time to see what God is doing for us. We can confidence even in the plague time because we serve a God who keeps his word. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. What God promises us uh, here in Psalm 91 he will perform for us when we stand upon his word and trust him. Conclusion, and thank you, God, for this time that you have blessed us with. How many of you are lacking God's peace right now? Are any of you experiencing difficult times? How many of you would like God to give you peace and assurance that every word will be okay? Let God be God and go to pray to him and turn to our troubles over to the Lord in prayer. And then I say, 
Thank you, Lord, for this time that we shared with you. Thank you for the message that, Lord, you put on our hearts. Thank you for our congregation. We pray and touch every pew and anoint every person right now. Whatever sickness they might go, go into the hospitals that we can't go into. Be with them and touch them and that they might receive, not just here in Ypsilanti, but all over the state and all over the country. Touch those people. Remember those who are grieving right now, Lord, for the loss. Even this uh, uh, this coronavirus has protected touched them and, and it even destroyed them. But Lord, you gave us a promise. And we say, thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Lord, we know if it happens to us, we have a better place. God will send us back home with him. But Lord, help us right now to pray for the people that we are. We thank you, Lord, in your name. Amen. We want to encourage you that we have to follow the law, that has been put on to us uh, from our uh, governor in Michigan, from our president of the United States, uh, from our state pastor in the Church of God of Michigan, and from uh, even West Middlesex, uh, pastors, uh, the elder there, we pray, Lord McDowell, that he has sent out a text. Even Bishop Clark and many people have shared with us. Even our Malou group and our Covenant Pastors group has come together to pray together. May God bless you. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. And don't stop loving God.